Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, everyone. This is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really happy to introduce today's guest, Wesleyan Greer. She is someone that you'll want to really listen to and take notes because I'm pretty sure she's going to give you some golden nuggets about sales and marketing. So listen to this. First, I want to tell you a little bit about Wesleyan. Having managed multiple million-dollar teams, Wesley marries her love for sales and her passion for coaching and transformed sales. She has a strong track record for driving revenue through sales, marketing, and ongoing customer support. This has earned her numerous accolades, including multiple Sales Team of the Year and Sales Excellence Awards. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Tammy. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to talk to you because there's a lot of people who, you you know, they, they come from maybe not a sales background and they're often like, okay, so what is the difference between marketing and sales? Ah, that's a good question. And I feel that a lot of people who are actually even in the industry, they confuse those things. So marketing is essentially the way that you attract cold traffic to your website, to your Facebook lives, to whatever you're actually doing. So marketing is just getting your name out there. It's letting the audience know who you are. And so I call that filling the funnel. So marketing is essentially filling your funnel. Once the funnel actually gets filled, it turns into a sales, your sales cycle, which is where you actually need to nurture and close those deals. So that's how I draw the line. Filling the funnel is the marketing, but keeping the funnel filled and ensuring that you're turning those, that cold traffic into paying customers, that is the sales thing. So, so with the, so you have, Marketing, you're attracting people. And then once you have the people in the funnel, then, of course, you have to sell them. So tell me a little bit more. Do do you need to have both sales and marketing to be successful? You absolutely do. Because if you are just focusing on your existing sphere of influence, you're never going to to grow. Your business will never grow. Your sales will never grow. So marketing is very important because you always have to be backfilling. However, if you only focus on marketing, which a lot of people do, they'll just post on um, social media, write blogs. Those are all marketing efforts then, but you're not converting people. So they really have to go hand in hand. You have to have your hand in a marketing pot and you have to have your hand in a sales pot. Uh, I'm chuckling about the hand in the pot. <laughs> true. So you, you're attracting people and you use some good examples, social media posts, blog posts, and, um, pro, you know, that could be either organic or paid marketing and, and promotions. But what I think my audience is really interested in is, okay, I've got the person, I've got them to opt into my free giveaway. How do I actually close more business so that I have more cash flow and I actually have money coming in the door for all my efforts. So really the key is, and this is where the sales and marketing collide, you want to ensure that you're speaking to your ideal prospect, your avatar, some people call it. And if you're speaking to that person, once they opt in to get your free XYZ, then you'll send them an email and they'll be like, yes, I need this person. That is somebody I need to engage with. Let me book this call that they're offering or let me go down this path. Maybe it is a a small entry level uh, 
offer that may be $17 for something, right? And really, I tell people, and it's your different businesses are different, right? So sometimes you need a low entry offer to tease the person to see, are they serious enough before they get time on your calendar? Sometimes you're going directly for a high value coaching or consulting or a a program that may be in the thousands of dollars. So at that point, you want to get somebody on the call so you can help convert them. But really, if you are selling something that's less than a thousand dollars, and that's across a 12 month period. So less than a thousand dollars across a 12 month period. What you want to do is you want to get them to physically have to pull out their credit card and buy something. And so it could be $7, $17. The seven is the the thing right now. People are using seven. Sometimes it's a four or nine, but just something low cost. And once you get them to pay you for a service, you know that they are more inclined to buy something else from you. So, so what you're saying is come up with something that you can sell them and it could be just something like $7, $17, something that is like, let's say under a hundred dollars that, that they might just say, Oh yeah, that's a no brainer. I'll, I'll buy that. And then, so once somebody buys something from you, like you said, they bought something. So that tells you, well, gee, they're willing to give me at least $7 or some small amount of money Mm -hmm. to test whatever this is. So what tips that can you provide? And I I know that a lot of people, you know, they go, oh, it's only $7, but that is pretty common. Um, I've seen it used a lot by very high end level people who, you know, they might say, okay, give me $7 or, or whatever that amount is. So what other tips can you give that to help people to move somebody forward in this sales process? So if we go with that, let's just use $7. And, you know, when you're thinking about how do I actually set my sales process up, the first thing that you give away is going to be something that is high value, right? Something that is free and that's high value. Then you offer them that low cost $7 thing. And if you sell a course, if you sell a service, a product, maybe it is something that you don't necessarily have to um, physically do. So a pre-recorded webinar that teaches them one step in your process, right? Not the first step, That's where a lot of people uh, make a mistake. You teach them the first step in the process and then they're like, okay, I can figure everything else out. You teach them something in the middle, right? Like if it's a five-step process, you teach them step three. And again, you make it a wow, like really help them get those light bulb moments. And the key is it's wow, not how, right? Wow, not how. And the goal of the wow, not how is to impress upon them that, hey, you really need me (laughs) to help you solve your problem. You can't do it on your own. And then the next step is you use that, uh, that low cost offer to really convert them and get them on the phone because sales at the end of the day is very relational. And there are a lot of people who do well, just selling directly online to people and they convert a lot of people. However, if you're selling higher ticket items, it's very unlikely that somebody is going to pull out their credit card after watching a 30 minute video or reading something on you and pay a thousand dollars, right? It's very, very unlikely. So you need to get them on the phone and you need to start asking them probing questions. I always say that first meeting is all about the prospect. If you're talking more than 25% of the time, then you're doing something wrong. So when you say ask probing questions, can you give me maybe two examples of a probing question? So one question that I always like to ask people is, how did you find out about me? 
right? Um, because the way that they came to find out about you is very telling as to where they are in their um, buyer decision journey. If they just, if they've been following you, like if somebody tells me, oh, I've been following you on LinkedIn for the past six months, that tells me they've already consumed a lot of my content. So we're going, you go from the know, the like, the trust, So they're a little bit further along that cycle in that know and trust, right? They just need some validation to know that I'm a real person. So ask them, where did you find out about me? And then another good question to ask is, what brought you, why did you say yes to the call? So asking them what made them take 15, 20, 30 minutes out of their day to actually speak with you. Because again, what we need to understand is what their pain is. The pain is the most important tool that you can use to convert a sale. So I like to say you get the pain and you understand the pain and then you put a little salt in that pain. You don't want to break the bone. You just want to sprain it just a little bit. So, so then you, I want to go back a little bit because you said something that really made my ear go, hmm. You said you want to give these people something they perceive as high value. What types of things in, in your experience do most people um, believe is high value? and I I take it that our whole goal is that we want to get them to say yes first and then, you know, give us at least their name, first name and their email. Um, And then, of course, then you can talk to them. So what is perceived to be high value in this day and age? So my what I tell people are teach them and they will come. So you need to teach them something that they don't know how to do. Teach them something that they can go on YouTube and watch 50 videos and get no information. They can read 10 social media posts. They can go to all these freebie trainings, but they're never going to peel back the layers of the onion. So really figure out if you're a consultant, a coach, a fitness trainer, doesn't matter what your industry is, but there's there are things that you know that your prospect doesn't know. And really to figure out what do I teach them? How do I really get them to that the first step in the process? Write down everything, right? Like write down, I say just vomit on paper. I tell my clients a lot, just vomit on paper. Write down everything that it, that you know. Maybe you have recently started your fitness business, let's just say. And so, and you've taken a courses, you've invested in yourself. And so you know how important it is to that for you to have invested in yourself to become a certified personal trainer, maybe. So what did you learn over your past six or 12 months in school that you didn't know before you actually invested in yourself? The same thing with a business coach. You have may have a certification, maybe you've taken courses. And really what you need to convince upon your prospects is, To get to where I am today, to even be here speaking to you, I've invested in myself because I understand how important development is. Or if you sell a physical product, I have used so many different products and I, let's say it's vegan makeup. I bought so much vegan makeup and I mean, so much conventional makeup and I was breaking out all the time. So I developed this product because of this. And so what you teach them is maybe you teach them how to apply this makeup or how this makeup is different. And the key is one thing. You don't need to overwhelm them because it's only 30 minutes, 30 to maybe 45 minutes is about the attention span of someone who is coming to that type of training. Wow, that that's really good information because if you think about how, how a lot of people, number one, you said, teach them something that you know that will help them, but don't, you know, you want to wow them, but not help them. I think that when I look at my personal thing, 
I, I've I've done probably way too much how just because the fact that I came from a teaching background and that was my job was to help people get to, you know, through this whole 16 week class, you know, with real skills. And so when you transfer that into selling your teaching, that's where I think a lot of us, you know, we don't know when to stop because we're so used to just pouring it on. So what about, and and this was me. I used to, I remember when I, this is like 2009, so 11 years ago. And I remember I really wanted to try to make money. And I would say, um, but I'm not a salesperson. (laughs) And so I would, you know, I was literally blocking myself because I would say, I'm not a sales um, person. I don't want anybody to think I'm trying to sell to them. I hate selling. What do you suggest that people like me do? What, because obviously we have to sell something in order to make money. Right. So what do we do to make that process for us easier? So the first thing that you have to do to actually achieve the growth that you would like to is you have to remove those self-limiting beliefs. Those, I'm not a salesperson. I don't like salespeople. Sales sucks. All of those negative thoughts that you have, really, that's the first step. And a lot of people equate sales with the used car salesperson, right? You go to the car lot and they just badger you. And then they call you a million times. They send you a million emails and you're like, I was just browsing. That is not what sales is. Sales is finding a solution to someone's problem. You are providing them the solution. So if you think of yourself as a solution provider and not a salesperson, that really is what helps get you past that block. And if somebody comes to you and you know that they have this problem and you say, I have the solution you are doing them a disservice by not offering them your solution, right? Um, it's just like you go if you go to the doctor and you've broken your arm and they say, I know how to fix it, but I'm not going to. It's the same exact thing. So you, if somebody has a problem, you have a solution. And once you get that in your brain, you will start the process of actually selling and making money. So so get rid of those limiting beliefs about I'm not a salesperson. And again, like you said, you're doing everyone a disservice if you don't provide that solution because you have the answers. And each one of us, because of our backgrounds, we probably have all kinds of solutions to problems just because of our lived experiences. So I wanted to ask you, Um, First of all, if somebody wants to reach out to you, where can they reach out? The best way to get in contact with me would be to follow me on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. Um, It's my name, Wesleyan Greer. Uh, Another way to learn more about what I'm doing as well as more tips, I would recommend going to my website, we have a blog that, and we blog daily about sales issues, sales leadership issues, virtual selling, things like that. And my website is transformedsales.com. Transformedsales.com. Wow, blogging daily. So, so that means that somebody could connect and actually get a constant flow of good advice on a daily basis. Um, that is correct. They definitely could. And then another thing, when you said LinkedIn, um, that that's another thing. People are always asking, where do you hang out? Mm-hmm. And, and of course, you're hanging out where your potential clients are. And yeah. so LinkedIn, and it, it's very interesting that, you know, you have, have that. So if somebody works with you, what does that look like? So what I do for clients is we really follow what I call a blueprint. Um, It's a sales leadership blueprint. 
You could be a business owner that is a, a solopreneur and you're not really thinking about hiring salespeople, or you could be at that point where it's time for you to start expanding your sales team. Whichever side of the coin that you're on, what you really need is you have to develop those leadership skills as well as those sales skills. So my sales leadership blueprint, it combines three distinct facets, executive coaching, leadership development, and sales training. And so I help you figure out how to sell as well as how to physically develop as a sales leader. And then the executive coaching portion is how do you get out of the weeds and take your hands out of the daily sales? So getting out of the weeds so that you can get into the the daily sales. So um, I wanted to go back to your daily blogs just for a second. Um, do you have, if somebody goes to your website, do, can they opt in for something or can they make an appointment with you? Yes. So we, because I really don't like getting too many emails. So we actually have a weekly newsletter and you can opt in to the weekly newsletter. And what we do there is we actually pull content that we have from different places. So blogs, um, I write for the Houston Business Journal. So there are articles in there, uh, maybe a LinkedIn article. And so you get a digest every Monday morning. That's your digest. And you can also just go right to the website and book an appointment with me if you want to chat about um, our services more. Wow, that that sounds like a, a really a good plan. Before I let you go, is there any other little tip or something that you think would be important, especially, um, you know, planning for, you know, increasing your sales and marketing for the coming year? Yes, I think that everyone needs to really be focused on the growth that they want to have in their business. Really do a deep dive into what worked well in 2020, what didn't work well, and all things aside, let's focus on how you are going to ensure that you set up the next year for success. Figure out these activities worked, these activities didn't. For instance, I'm talking to clients who have done so much networking, and then I ask them, what is the return on that investment? How many clients have you gotten through all of those weekly meetings that you're going to, all of these things? And they say one or two. So invest that time elsewhere. And if you haven't started doing things on the marketing side, which are, um, writing content for your actual prospect, uh, doing postings on social media, doing videos, all of those things are going to fill your funnel. And you have to really understand when you fill that funnel, who in your funnel is worth the time? Because everyone who jumps on your email list or buys that first little $7 product, they're not going to be an ideal client. So in order to maximize your time and have the best return on your investment, you really have to have a good idea of who that person is. And finally, serve, don't sell. Be sure that you are the solution provider to your client's problems. Serve, don't sell. So serve, don't sell. And know who your ideal client is. I yeah. think that right there is something that often people, let's say they throw <laughs> spaghetti against the wall, hoping to attract. Do you have, I, I look now, I, my brain just went, ah, exploded <laughs> because I'm like, do you have any tips on how do you determine who that ideal client is. You have to really understand where you can make the biggest splash. So for instance, 
the industry that I'm in, which is, I guess, the big umbrella is sales training, right? So there are a gazillion different sales training programs out there. But what I or my strength lies is really developing the leader that then develops their team, right? So you have to understand what are you really good at? You don't want to operate in the area that you're mediocre. If you're mediocre, you're always going to lose. Operate in your top 5%. What are you top 5% at and how can you really make an impact? You want to be the big fish in a small pond. So like you said, people throw spaghetti at the wall. They're doing this. They're doing that. They're talking to this person, this person, and that person. But what happens is when you talk to everyone, you talk to no one. So figure out what's your top 5% at and really, really focus on honing in on that. That is a really super tip and something that if you're listening today, I I highly suggest that if you are someone who is a leader and you want to develop that so that you can have this bigger, better sales team and want to do more, let's say, sales and get a bigger bang for your marketing time and effort then uh, Wesleyan, I think, is the person to talk to because, you know, you said it in your domain name, Transformed Sales. Mm -hmm. And that is what we all need because, you know, what's the bottom line? And you said it, you know, you create relationships and you serve by becoming the solution to someone's problem. And, And it just seems... So simple and easy if you think about it in that way, because we all make everything so complicated with with this. But like you said, if you're providing high quality information and content like you do with daily blogging um, uh, and in the being in the right place where your ideal client hangs out, I think it is very key. Also, so thank you so much. It was a great conversation. Thank you so much um, for having me. I enjoyed my time. Good, thank you. Everyone, remember you can reach out to transformedsales.com. This is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.